Hi everyone, and welcome to Belmont News Now, your community update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Recently, we had our January student posted a TikTok video that has concerned our school community. Uh, this has been taken care of by the school administration and the police has been involved. With us, we have today Kimberly Haley Jackson, a chair of the diversity task. I'm vice chair of the Human Rights Commission also is the co-founder of the Black and Brown, and Brown in Belmont. Also, we have with us Brian Nadu, Chair of the Human Rights Commission in Belmont. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Community Organized uh, for Solidarity is inviting all the Belmont residents to a community conversation tomorrow, um, May 27 at 7.30 via Zoom. Uh, Kim, you are part of this team that you're organizing it. Can you please tell us um, all about it, please? Um, sure. So I will be moderating um, with CAUSE tomorrow night to kind of have a community conversation around some of the concerns that have been coming up within uh, the larger community, especially in the schools, um, and how that's handled at least um, from a town perspective. So I believe um, Mary and Ryan, the district attorney will be there and uh, Jamie McIsaac, the chief of police, chief of police of Belmont. And um, we've also invited school administration. So we help to have their full participation so we can sort of talk about what's been going on within the community. I would like to say before we get started that there, you know, there's a lot of concern around a particular incident which is 100 you know as a parent um i understand that um but i i believe we need to look at things within a greater context um you know these things have been happening all year um it's it's been it's not even an undercurrent i would say it's just a, a major point of concern for those of us who've been alerted to some of the things that are going on um, so probably within the past, I would say month and a half, two months, I've been alerted to eight incidents across the, the majority of schools um, within the Belmont community. So it is not by any means limited to the Chenery. The first step towards eliminating racism is to be aware that it is happening. So can you tell us how are we going to create this more inclusive community? And will this meeting cooperate with that? Um, sure, I can I can take some of that and then I can kick it over to my the chair of the BHRC. So, you know, what's helpful is having open communication with parents when something does occur, um, full transparency on the event that happened and what steps were taken, um, either the restorative justice pathway or, you know, if what appropriate um, discipline was taken with the, the child in question, and also what was the care for the children that were affected? I think that's a large piece that we're leaving out of this conversation. What is the care like for the children who are affected by these um, incidents that come up? Um, you know, what we've tried to do is have community conversations. Cause has been really good with that. We've started more affinity groups lately. So the Pan-Asian Coalition um, has come together, you know, very strongly recently around um, the incidents related to um, attacks on Asian Americans. Um, Black and Brown in Belmont, which was an affinity group, started as an outgrowth um, from cause and now we're our own group. So starting to work with the schools in order to be a safe space for those families um, who are either Black or Brown themselves, they do not need to have a child, or if you are the parent of a Black or Brown child. So having a support system is very important. Um, and then also there's work being done at the diversity task force level to kind of bring awareness to these issues that are happening um, through our research, giving feedback to the town administration and the school committee on what can be done. Um, so there are a lot of things going on that we're, we're trying to address and make people more aware of these issues. And I think as that happens, people are becoming more uncomfortable because they're saying, you know, I've heard, you know, this doesn't exist in Belmont. I'm like, well, it doesn't happen to you. It happens, okay. you know, just because you're not aware doesn't mean that it isn't there. Um, but we've also done some work um, in the BHRC um, and I'll let Brian speak to that work. Yes, I'm going to Brian now. 
Brian, being the chair of the Human Rights Commission, what is the role of the commission in this kind of event? So one of the things that we have been working on over the last year is partnering with the school system through the superintendent's office and with the principals of the various schools to really partner with them so that we can come in and help educate around discrimination in all forms, specifically in this environment that we're in right now around racism and what's happening in our community. One of the other things that, that we've worked with the select board and Kim is the chair of is creating the, the diversity task force to really look at what's going on in the town of Belmont, what needs to change, what needs to happen. So that we were very excited that that diversity task force was approved and brought into reality. Um, one of the other things that we are, are doing is really, uh, one of the other things that we have done is bring in the, uh, the seniors from the, the high school and really partner with them to help them really figure out what changes do they want to bring to the high school and what do they want to see. And that has been exciting and wonderful work to partner with them to really, so that they have a voice in their high school. Uh, this past year, the 2021 class is the one that's cycling out with, is the one we've worked with at the moment. They're going to bring on, on board the June, uh, the rising seniors that will then also continue to do that work. And we're very excited that it is that we're partnering with these different organizations in the school district to really bring about change. And this is a new phenomenon or has this been happening all the time and we are just paying attention? It, I think that they're happening all the time, unfortunately, uh, in this current uh, atmosphere that we're in around the country that's happening you know, across our country, Belmont is not immune and it's not unique to these kinds of instances. Uh, I think that based upon what's happened over the last two or three years, that's really put a spotlight on what's happening, unfortunately, in a negative way and allowing this kind of speech to happen and this kind of behavior to happen. And what we're seeing from the Belmont Human Rights Commission is that this temperament is really, it's going up and we're really working hard to to get out and hopefully educate the community all of the community about discrimination its impact and racism specifically so we are really working hard to kind of, to really get the message out that this is not tolerable it, and it needs to stop correct um the belmont public schools has agreed to hire an equity director to conduct an equity audit for the public, uh, Belmont Public School. Uh, should the town also make this commitment? Yes, um, especially because I think we're tending to think about this as mainly um, issues that occur within the public school system. And that just is a fallacy. That is not true. Um, this happens outside of the school community. We have complaints from adults um, who've experienced discrimination um, online, back and forth can be, you know, racially, religiously tinged. So, you know, overall, I think it's, it's good for the town to get a look at sort of like what's going on and not only address it at the school level, but, you know, at home with your families and, you know, Belmont itself has a problem. And hopefully, you know, doing a, you know, having a diversity task force uh, will help the town kind of see some of those things and see where we can, um, get some help and also like with the director um, position the DEI role um, that the school committee just voted on which was amazing um, you know not ideal obviously because we the override situation I know people you know are, are upset about that and you know I can understand it but there's a real need here when you hear the stories from these children and families who are affected and are in pain and hopefully you will have someone who can um, help smooth the way for them um, and make Belmont a more welcoming place. This isn't a special interest. This is a matter of equity for everyone. And at no point does equal rights and your child feeling safe going to school equate a special interest. All right, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's event and thank you for uh, your work. You think this event will follow by more events? Yes. 
Absolutely. Um, there are several events planned over the summer um, by various affinity groups. And so I would just ask everyone to keep their eyes and ears open for events from the BHRC, from CAUSE, um, from Black and Brown and Belmont Bar, Beyond Ferguson, LGBTQ Alliance. So we're very busy. Thank you again. I'm looking forward and thank you for coming to the show. And is there anything that you would like to add that you are advocating and you would like to share to the community? Brian or Kim? Sure. If you live or work in Belmont and you experience any kind of, of discrimination, please reach out to us. Let us know. We're a resource. That's why we're here. And we will certainly work with you and help you resolve your issue. Thank you. Kim? No, nope, I think Brian wrapped it up nicely. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to the show. And if you're interested in participating in the community forum tomorrow, May 27, please register using the link that appears on the screen. And this was News Now, your community news show. And thank you for watching. <laughs>